Greetings, humans. It's me, man, to see you in the next episode of Blues and Bullets Bubbleheads. Thanks so much for joining me. We are just gonna jump right into this. We got the story kicked off last time. And we are. Here? We have a whole conversation. Let's see if it's scene nine. Anyway, we uh, tried as hard as we could not to cut a deal with Capone, but. Yo, you're not gonna ask me for my last words. You should be running. I'm never going to help you. Why me? I'm not asking you to help me. I'm not a ghost. I'll do it. Not for you. For her. <laughs> the voice is in my giant head. <sighs> this town has become a jungle. We're not even the rats are safe. fight to steal the last scraps of dignity we have left. And those who should judge them prefer to squabble over their prey. But it wasn't always like this. The Santa Esperanza I was born in was a clean town. A place where it meant something to be a cop. Some crap out. It's like, ow, that hurt. Turn around. We built my life. Got my feet back on the ground. But now he's back. And he's dragged me in. I'm gonna need help. Hmm. I'm gonna have the juice so that we can try to romance the lady later. I think she <clears throat> would be mad if we had the alcohol. I knew you would, Alice. Write this down. 31 Wicker Avenue, in Lakeview. Thanks. Nice work. Elliot, what do you want with him? He's got a hell of a file. It's going straight through my chin. Huh. I think he's mixed up in a kidnapping, but my client doesn't want the police involved. What are you getting yourself into? Who's your client? Alice, I don't have much time. I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. <sighs> yeah. 
Giant bubble heads. Thirty one Wicker Avenue. This is it. You sure? I'm sure. At last. That stench of stale grease about you reminds me too much of my old job. You worked as a waiter? I was a chef. And not in any old kitchen at the maximum security penitentiary on Gore Island. Can't think of a better way to do time. And how do you think I met Alphonse? Playing golf? Alphonse? On the subject of cooking, I know your blueberry pie had an extra something. I still don't know what. Alphonse? <sighs> so what now? You got a plan? Hmm, Take a look around twice. in case there's a rear exit. I'll take the main door. My pleasure. <laughs> uh. The fact that a criminal like him can hang up his shingle in broad daylight says a lot about Santa Esperanza. It's like Saint Hope. Santa Esperanza. Someone took out sections of the fence. Odd. Oh. Looks like statues in the garden. Interesting taste. Been centuries since a gardener visited this house. Maybe Baccarini's business isn't going too well. <laughs> doesn't work. I guess Baccarini doesn't get many visitors. <laughs> Baccarini? Carlo Baccarini? Nothing of interest out back. Sorry. You better come see this, Mr. Ness. What is it? I don't know how to describe it. Time to investigate the copes. Hopefully, this won't take that long. Is that our man? Baccarini. My God. We have to My find goodness. out who did this and why. Let's go. You're the detective, Mr. Ness. Besides, Alphonse will want to see this. I'll be right back. All right. Oh, we have to establish how right. Baccarini died. Maybe the body parts can shed some light on the motive. Right, that's fine. Takes a strong man to tear that out, or several. Holy Christ, what the hell are we up against? Oh man, why didn't he have a... His eyes were pulled clean out of their sockets. Whoever did this, a giant head. The first time. And if they committed any other murder <clears throat> like this, it's likely that the police found some of the bodies. I must remember to ask Alice. His teeth were all pulled out before he was killed. The buildup of blood inside his mouth speaks for itself. 
pity he Pun intended. Last Christmas, because he'd almost pass for a tree. There's no doubt the murderer took his time. This isn't a cut, it's a tear. His hands were ripped off. Who has that kind of strength? I don't know, star man. Hmm. Once he got stuck in there, looks like the bottom of a glass. It's Baccarini, no doubt about that. Although the one I remember was more together. He was more together. <clears throat> the blood comes from the other side of the corridor and ends next to the body. He was attacked in the other room and dragged to the hall. Man. I don't think the recreation is going to have giant heads. I wish it would. It's coming up the recreation of the crime. The evidence suggests that the events began in the lounge. How did Baccarini and Cancer put all murderer? the facts together? Whatever crushed the table must have been really heavy, or maybe it was thrown extremely hard. And tasted like wine. What am I missing? A perfectly circular this day. Dent, as if someone had tried to hammer in a gigantic bolt, around four inches in diameter. wristwatch without unfastening it or fastens the strap again after taking it off this was opened recently smells of whiskey Glass on the floor indicates the window was broken from outside. There's something under there. How'd it wind up under there? Not one round fired. It must have happened fast. We had just a clue finding machine, which is like bam, bam, bam. Find all the clues. That's right. One knife's missing, the biggest one. Italians and olives. They lap those things up like caviar. Like a true bachelor, he should have put these into soak. Hours of scraping to get them clean. 
Although at this stage, I don't think Baccarini's too worried about that. Yeah, you don't really lap up olives or caviar. It's two quite of a two of wine. exaggeration. I've always been a whiskey man, but I know a good wine when I see one. So this game has to take place after 1952 that then. Looks good. Why is it that two out of three Italian gangsters are great cooks? I'll never understand what the deal is with them in cooking. The plates and the glasses leave no room for doubt. Baccarini had company for dinner. Hmm. Shut from the inside. Right, I think that is it for the kitchen. We still have one more hallway and room of clues to find. Over to here. So, well, let's work on the board a little bit. Mutilation. The murderer tore Baccarini's hands off. Baccarini's teeth were all pulled out. Hands ripped off, teeth torn out. I guess I'll have to rule out criminal intent or a personal angle. Baccarini's eyes still haven't shown up. What if I look for whatever was used to remove them? Right. Let's go to the assault. A broken whiskey glass found in the dining room. Guess we don't really okay, have so that many. Right. Pieces of glass from the window in the hall found inside the house. The lamp torn off its bracket. An open bottle of whiskey. I'd say Baccarini was drinking in the dining room when his assailant burst in through the window. Baccarini pulled his gun, but the murderer disarmed him before he could shoot. Where did the torture begin? So I remember Broken this. Glass found um, in the dining room. No, it's the it's the lamp that was the torture. A broken table, scratched and covered in blood. Two pools of blood. One on either side of the dining room table. A blood-stained wristwatch with a glass blood stain show that the murderer began to torture Baccarini on the dining table itself. That was where his hands were torn off. As a result, his wristwatch fell to the ground. How did the body reach its current position? The lamp, torn off its brackets and blocking the stairs. The trail of blood from the dining room to the hall. Baccarini, already minus hands was dragged into the hall, where the murderer used the brackets of the lamp to complete his macabre diorama. All right. Just gotta find the spoon. Hmm. Jam shut the one side. open. Maybe between the two of us when Milton gets back. If I'm not mistaken, this door opens onto the same room as the locked door in the kitchen. <clears throat> Blood and some kind of sticky liquid. The stickiest of the liquids. So... A teaspoon stained with blood and some kind of sticky liquid. A mixture of sticky liquid and blood can only mean one thing. The spoon was used to remove Baccarini's eyes. The mutilations and the disappearance of his eyes suggest two possible motives. Psychopathy or cultist fanaticism. Which is it? So it's the cult thing which we haven't looked at yet, so... <clears throat> yep, gotta look for more stuff. Now's where we see all the weird stuff. Let's look at the symbol on the wall first. Ooh. What is that? Oh shit. I should have stayed in my diner.
Surprise, it's my face. On the body. Well, at least I know why his teeth were pulled out, more or less. More or less. It looks like a ritual. What was Baccarini mixed up in? Some kind of symbol drawn in blood. Evil cult. A sick altar of human flesh. Although I don't know the origin of the symbol in the bathroom and the altar of flesh and teeth, I'd say the motive was some kind of occult religion. The big question is, who did it? The altar of flesh and teeth sounds like goth band or something. It's the altar of flesh and teeth. Alrighty. This car looks too classy for a forger like Baccarini. Are there sufficient reasons to believe that when the murderer attacked Baccarini, there was someone else in the house? The first possibility to be ruled out is that the car belonged to Baccarini. Vermont plates. Someone drove a long way. Looks like a rapist's car. Let's take a look in the glove compartment. Bingo. A man's cigarette case. OB, one of the Baccarini clan? So, looks like that's all there was there. Baccarini, already minus hands, was dragged into the hall, where the murderer used the brackets of the lamp to complete his macabre diorama. standing. Three. The initials on the cigarette case don't match his name. The next possibility that needs to be ruled out is that the car was stolen. There should be evidence that there was someone else in the house. Dirty plates, glasses, and silverware from a di dirty dishes and glasses prove that Baccarini ate lasagna with one other person. Was Baccarini's guest still in the house when the murderer showed up? A door in the kitchen, locked from... A door in the corridor, jammed shut. It opens onto the same room as the broken whiskey glass found in the dining room. What looks like the bottom of a broken glass seems clear that Baccarini and his guest were drinking when the murderer took them by surprise. The real question is, what happened to the witness? Did they escape? Did the murderer take them? Or are they still in the house? A door in the corridor, jammed shut. In a door in the kitchen, locked from the inside. One locked door could be a coincidence, but two locked doors, which open onto the same room, can't be. Either I'm completely wrong, or the witness is in that room. But I need Milton to open one of those doors. Mr. Ness, can you open the door for me? open. Why did you ring? I thought I should use the doorbell so I wouldn't startle you. When I came in, I pressed the doorbell and it didn't work. Well, in light of the facts, I deduced that it was your finger that wasn't working. Hmm. 
So, what can you tell me to restore my faith in you as a detective? What is that? Not a good start. It's a camera, so Alphonse can see all this. All right. Follow me. Baccarini had company for dinner. Someone oh, from Vermont, no big the initial OB. Someone whose social status was a lot higher, but who was on the same side of the law. He served lasagna, and after clearing away the dishes, they opened a bottle of whiskey in the dining room. That was when the murderer burst in on them, coming through the window which he broke with his own body weight. Baccarini, or maybe his guest, pulled a gun, but it was a waste of time. The murderer was so fast he was disarmed before he could fire. He focused his attention on Baccarini, totally ignoring the guest, and lifted him up into the air. He then threw him against the dining room table so hard that one of the glasses of whiskey was embedded in Baccarini's back. He span around, clawing at the table, and immediately afterwards the murderer ripped off his hands. I have no idea how he did it, but all the evidence suggests he just pulled. Blood sprayed everywhere. The wristwatch fell to the ground. He dragged him through the corridor into the hall. He tore down the lamp, hung him from the brackets, and stabbed steel rods through his body. He skewered him on the iron bars, possibly taken from the fence outside, and pulled out his teeth one by one. Finally, he scooped out his eyes with a teaspoon. Baccarini must have been dead when the murderer went to the bathroom with his hands and his teeth. There, he arranged them to make an altar, weaving the fingers together and placing the teeth inside. Next, he painted something on the wall in blood, a symbol which I don't recognize, but which could have some kind of ritualistic significance. When he you finished think? his artwork, he left. I don't know what he did with the eyes. You're telling me that someone did all this on with a teaspoon? More or less. And you worked all this out on your own some, just by looking? More or less. I don't know which of the two of you scares me more. Wait a second. What about the guest? Right. Come with me. Nothing. Turns out Mr. Untouchable isn't infallible. But you were close. Congratulations. This must be Baccarini's office. Let's take a quick look around. All yours. It's a Tanner book. Why'd you go to jail? For murder, but... You didn't do it, of course. Of course I did it, but I didn't intend to. You're at a crime scene, and you sit down to read. <clears throat> Titus Andronicus. One of the actors on the Hindenburg lent it to me. They're performing it soon. You couldn't ask for more appropriate reading material. Murder, mutilation, torture. <laughs> Shakespeare's got it all. We've lost the only lead we had to help us find Sofia Capone. You think Baccarini's murder could be related? Maybe. It's hard to say. Okay. Oh yeah. Make it rain. Make it rain. Jesus. There's at least a million dollars here. <clears throat> Baccarini's? I'd be surprised. Probably his guests, and I doubt it was to pay Baccarini for his services. None of his forgeries are worth that much. Carlo, I have the goods for OB, but I have to take the children to school tomorrow and I can't make the meetup. Friday, same time, same place. 
It's signed N.I. Mm-hmm. These initials are getting to be a pain in the ass, right? I have to take the kids to school tomorrow. I don't think this is some loving divorced daddy, Milton. Ah, I take back what I just said. The driver's license of one John Martinson and Osmond Burke. OB. Hmm. Do we know him? The eldest son of the richest family in Vermont, convicted rapist. He was arrested thanks to the testimony of his father, who wound up disinheriting him. He escaped from prison Sorry, just last week. face. He hand. broke into the family home and slit the throats of all his relatives one by one. Opened the safe and got away with a fortune. Uh, they don't make jails like they used to. All starting to add up, isn't it? Ah! Out of my way! Out! Out! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All starting to add up, isn't it? Ah! Out of my way! Out! Out! Oh. Out! Ah! 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 Oh. Ah! Milton! Ah! Milton! You're doing fine on your own, Mr. Ah! I believe in you. Ah! Ah! Like a bitch. Baccarini? He was a monster! Oh, get your hands off me, Negro! What was he like? Damn. Describe him for me. He was a monster. Red and black. I mean, his head reached the ceiling. He tore off his hands with his claws! It was a monster! A monster! Should I hit him again? Yes. <laughs> You're Osmond Burke, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Good. Now pay attention, Burke, because I have a question for you. Who is this money for? Uh, uh, Nikolai Ivankov. Rings a bell. One of Capone's right-hand men 20 years ago. What does this stuff about kids mean? I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Calm down, Burke. You were going to meet up with him, right? Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, the docks, uh, uh, birth 42, right, right next to where, um, where, where the uh, all Alligator 3 is moored. So what's the meetup time? Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, uh, tomorrow, 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 noon, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow? No, it's going to be tonight. Uh, uh. Don't get too comfortable. We'll be there in no time. <laughs> the cops in Santa Esperanza aren't as straight as the cops in Vermont. Even so, I think they'll be delighted to see you at the station. I'm afraid not, Mr. Ness. I have to take him to Alphonse. Out of the question. I know his temper. He'll beat him to a pulp. Listen, if the missing girl was your granddaughter, you wouldn't forgive me if I didn't let you see the only suspect who could lead us to her. Okay. Ah, shucks. What? I thought that bloodbath would cover up the smell of stale grease. I was wrong. Conscientious. 
You analyzed all the elements in episode one. Excellent. We got an achievement. Elliot? Ah, oh, Delphine. Oh, thank God you're here. The lights were off, so I thought that... I'm sorry. I got out of the hospital late, then I went to the station to pick up Jim's check, and when they told me... I... I'm scared. Of what? What are you drinking? It's only juice. Juice and nothing else. Breathe on me. <sighs> you heard me. <sighs> I'm sorry. It, it hasn't been a good day. What's happened? No! You knew! Knew about what? What's that gun doing there? Hmm. Sometimes I go out into the countryside and shoot up bottles. If the cola company ever finds out... <sighs> You're such an idiot. Seriously, you don't know? No, I don't know. And if you keep up the guessing games, I'll never know. He's back. Who? Him. I don't know why it still surprises me, but it's incredible that you were such a good detective, and yet you've never been able to understand people. Capone got out of jail. Where do you hear that? Chief Jenkins. Chief Jenkins? The same guy who said he was going to clean up Santa Esperanza, right? In that case, you can rest assured Capone just put on his striped pajamas, and in four minutes' time, he'll be snoring in his cell. Elliot, what if it's true? If he's out, what's the first thing he's going to do? Who does he hate more than anyone? He spent almost 20 years in jail. Capone's an old man. If he gets out, at most he's going to challenge me to a race to the nearest park bench. Please, Elliot, don't joke. You're the only part of Jim's life that I have left. If you put yourself in danger, I... Please, no, but thanks. My hand? I burnt it cooking. Fried eggs are the devil's work. What's going on, Elliot? We're closed. Can you wait outside for a couple of minutes, Milton? Sure, of course. Uh, although, I'm sorry to say, but we're short on time. Elliot. Um. I said a couple of minutes, Milton. It's all right. Goodbye, Elliot. You can use that couple of minutes to teach this gentleman some manners. What? No, and it's none of your business. Sorry to butt in. I've brought your rapist costume for the party. Seriously, you're not... No, she's the wife of a friend who died in the line of duty, Jim Dockers. Mm. Alphonse told me about him. Your Alphonse killed him. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Ness. Although he's not the same man he was. Anyway, isn't the deal with marriage until death do us part? It's not that simple. There are other factors. Dockers was my best friend. I couldn't do that to him. Not even now he's dead. Right. So you like her, but you don't have the nerve. Oh yeah? What would you do? Women have never hmm. been one of my priorities. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Clueless. You Alphonse good, didn't you? I don't think he holds it against me this far down the line. He's a new man now, right? Did you enjoy it? I'm a cop. Correction, I was a cop. You do the job you're given. End of story. I hear you. But you didn't finish the next job they gave you. Did they find those kids? 
No. How do I look? Like the invisible man in the movie. <laughs> no one's gonna buy it. Take it easy. Everything's going to work out fine. All right. Well, that is going to be it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, appreciate it when you like and subscribe. And join me next time for the next episode of Bubblehead Blues and Bullets. Spinning Mantis out. See ya.